Welcome to Lighting the Educational Flame, created and produced by educator and author Mark Hoberman, owner and director of Grade Success Tutoring. Mark will be joined by Susan Brender, CEO and host of The Susan Brender Show. The purpose of this program is to offer our listeners a variety of stories dealing with many interesting topics surrounding education. It is our hope that students and parents alike will benefit from the wide range of topics, including study skills, test prep, anti-bullying, sports, music, and more. We hope you enjoy our show, Lighting the Educational Flame. Hello, and welcome to the talk show, Lighting the Educational Flame, brought to you by Great Success Education. I am Mark Hoberman, and as usual, my co-host is Susan Brander. How are you today, Susan? You're going to hear me so many times that you're going to get bored with me. I tell you that much. I'm bored already. That can't happen. <laughs> okay. Now, I have to tell you something. You know, music and also acting and, you know, getting involved in all kinds of performing arts, it transforms people in ways they can't even describe, Mark. It's, it's the most amazing thing. And I'm sure you feel, feel the same way when you Absolutely. listen. Absolutely. Right? M when music you... is unbelievable. I mean, I, I like a lot of different genres. I played in high school band. Still yeah. play a little bit now. Obviously not professionally. But... But, uh, and what it does for the kids, my students, it's, it's mm -hmm. immeasurable with all the songs that are on uh, shows that are, are on shows such as uh, American Idol and America's Got Talent. And our guest today was a semifinalist on America's Got Talent. So I think we're in for, for a big treat today. And we're going to hear a lot about her that I don't yeah. think America knew before. That's right. Well, well, I certainly look forward to it. And, and, and I look forward to us working together because this is just the, the best. Great. I'm so excited. So let's bring her on. Our guest today is singing sensation Daniela Mass. Daniela, welcome to Lighting the Educational Flame. Thank you so much for the invitation. It is a pleasure to be here. Uh, our pleasure to have you. Daniela, you have such an interesting background with regards to your culture and your profession. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about how you became interested in singing professionally, your move from your country, which I believe was Colombia, to the United States? What did all that entail? Yes. Uh, well, my beginnings, uh, let's say I started singing when I was about six or seven years old. Okay. And then I started practicing more um, seriously, let's say that more serious, uh, when I went to uh, school, music school, when I was eight years old in Colombia. That was all in Colombia. And then uh, it's, it's basically at that age when I truly felt that I have found something I, I wanted to do or something that I just felt really comfortable doing and at eight years old. And then I continued my studies until 16 years old. I graduated as a basic mus musician. That's what they call it. It's a music academy. And then I went to college and started music. And all this, uh, th this music world was just my world. That was all I can sing or I could eat or I could just talk about was music. And so I started in Colombia. Then I uh, came to the United States in 2010, only for about eight months or nine, uh, to uh, study at the Broadway Dance Center in New York. So I started some of the, uh, trying to dance. I'm not a good dancer, although I'm Latina. I can dance Latin American music. Right. Uh, but uh, when they told me something about one, two, three, four, one, two, right. I was like, I have no idea what you're counting. <laughs> I don't know. Sure. Uh, and... I just dedicated my time at this academy, which is supposed to be dancing, at uh, the musical part. They had the musical uh, classes. Uh, so I started musicals there. I moved back to Colombia. Uh, and then I continued my studies at university. Uh, and then pretty much a few, the past two years, I've been uh, studying a lot of musical theater uh, here in Tampa, for example. And I keep on just just growing as a musician, I guess every every day it's a study, study, yeah, yeah. never ending. You know, Daniela, I know you've done some very exciting work uh, with certain charities. What can you tell us about the projects that you're involved in? Well, yeah, honestly, I could divide them. Let's say for humans, uh, humans and non-humans charities that have been part of. Uh, I'm a passionate. Uh, I'm very passionate towards uh, the planet and animals. I'm a vegan and I do care of everything that's happening uh, recently around the world and the fact that a lot of people still deny the fact that we have global warming and all this. So it's, it is pretty much something that I, I 
I live with every day and I do my best to share, not in a political way, but a very human, like artist way uh, with my followers that there's many things that you can do to protect our planet and also yeah. protect our, the animals that are, are out there. Also yeah. in my country, I come from a third world country in a sense. We, uh, our yeah. education is good. Uh, we do have some issues with the with the school from K two L K twelve. That's what we call it here. Um, but because the public school aren't as as, as good, so we're working towards that uh, to improve education down there for students. And then uh, here in the United States, I started doing something every year, which I'm very proud of. This year we could not do it because obvious reasons. Uh, in Missouri, in St. Louis, Missouri, I have this contact. Uh, she's a friend of mine. She's a teacher, a Spanish teacher at a high school. And um, she invites me every year to go and talk to her students and sing a couple of Spanish songs. Oh, and we wow. go over uh, sort of like that, that experience to share with them what it is, how it is to be a Latin American woman in the United States, an immigrant, or just pursuing their dreams. Uh, it's, it's something that I do love doing uh, besides singing. I think that that part has always been with me. I just, I just, I just enjoy uh, giving as as much of my energy to people as I can, and and see how they absorb it in a good way, and see how they they sort of either learn or they just feel like you know what that's right, and they feel encouraged. And I love doing that, doing that with people. And and, and yeah, you know, Mark, you've been a teacher, and people know from our show that you've been really involved in education for such a long, long time. When you listen to Daniela talk all about her charity, I mean, I'll, that's what I'll call it, charity, uh, working with schools and singing in schools. Uh, how do you feel about that? I mean, isn't that an, an incredible, you know, generosity, if you will? It is, and it's, and it's so empowering. What's important, what I heard is, is, is some buzzwords. And the buzzword is, She's from another country, she's Latin, she's a female. And, you know, I can't tell you in 33 years, most of my 33 years was spent in schools where 77% of the population was on free and reduced lunch, had to be 60% and 50% from other countries. And it's very difficult, the language barrier. And it's, it's dangerous in the instances because what I've seen quite honestly, and I'll tell both you, Susan and Daniela, is that sometimes the kids at age 12 or 14 start to know the language better than their parents. Yeah. And that's difficult mm -hmm. because you got to really have, you have to have no ego when it comes to that because sometimes they come in for teacher conferences, teacher parent conferences and the kids and the teacher kind of lead that. But I've seen so many uh, males and females, but quite honestly, females in particular who had very low self-esteem because they didn't know the language, which sometimes mm -hmm. translated to, not such great grades, uh, and just, uh, as I said, a lack of self-esteem. And this empowerment, uh, I'm sure, Daniela, you feel it, and I'm sure you see it, but I can tell you as a teacher in the classroom for over three decades, I don't think you realize the Im immense impact you're having because I know I've seen, I've had some celebrities come in and even some non-celebrities, you just, you just see the eyes change. And you see the realization, mm -hmm. they can see themselves through you. And look what this person did. And she's a female and she's Latin. And she also came here, didn't know. And I'm sure there was a language problem. So uh, it's just an incredible thing. And it's just great for, for teens today. They're struggling with so many things. Yeah. Uh, you know, teen suicide is up. And now with, with the pandemic and things like that, so many things are stacked against them. And I think it's amazing that you, you've done work in that way. You know, Daniela, how have your cultural experience helped you achieve success? There must be a reason, there must be a rhyme, something that has really get you to be the, where you really need to be. Um, so can you tell our audience a little bit about your cultural experiences that you've had here in America? Yeah, I, I like to talk to people about the fact that perhaps having the opportunity to travel uh, gives you a more wide uh, perspective of the world itself and culture itself. There are many people who are unable to do it because of financial issues, but I always encourage people somehow, 
uh, reading a new book of some different cultures or just finding a video that could be seen every, anywhere on YouTube. There's so many documentaries nowadays. It is truly something that I encourage people to do because when we grew up, when we grew up and I grew up, I grew up in a, a Catholic country. I, I was born a Catholic, but I'm not Catholic myself. I do not practice Catholicism. But that is part of the, uh, uh, the things that you, you, you grew up with in your, in your, in your city, in, with your town, with your people, with your family. Uh, but I always felt deep inside that it was something more than what I, I was seeing. So I've always had this curiosity inside of me. And I always liked to research and learn something new. I felt truly and completely connected with languages. So I started uh, Japanese when I was 16, 17, and then English is pretty much when I came to the United States. I did not know any English before I came to the United States. And that sort of helps me to, to understand people's behavior because usually people's behaviors are extremely connected with their culture uh, roots, correct? And so it truly helps me communicate better with people and in, uh, in a way that we can, where we can have a dialogue and dialogues are completely important rather than starting a fight, rather than starting a discussion. Dialogues are ways of having peace and that, that having that uh, open, open mind and being able to to understand different cultures, it really does help you feel what the other person is feeling or just understanding what they're trying to tell you and not judging by their looks or by the religions or by the, the, the way they speak. So yes, it, it is truly something really important to have in mind when, uh, when being a person that works with a lot of people, in your case, you talk to uh, other people on radios. In my case, I'm an artist. I, it truly is important, but I think for everyone to be able to understand that we're not the only ones in the world. We have many other people around the world that we just got to understand each other. I think it's great. I think the, calling it a dialogue uh, versus some other things really has a, a more positive connotation, certainly for young yeah. people. Uh, you know, and I know that you've worked with uh, some, some huge stars in the music world. And actually, uh, I had the pleasure of interviewing world-renowned jazz uh, flautist Nesta Torres. I know you did some work with Nesta as well. So yeah. tell me what that experience was like. He's, he's a superstar. Ah, Nesta is such a wonderful human being. Yes. I enjoy working with him. Uh, we are both, uh, and, and I do not want to get to religions or anything, uh, but I met him a couple of years ago, and he introduced me to, to the practice that I have, uh, that I currently do, which is uh, Buddhism. I studied Buddhism okay. with him. So it is a very, very nice connection that I have with Nestor Torres. And then musically, he is truly an amazing gift to this world. And I am I'm so, so, so blessed that I am able to work with him. And also the, the fact that he... Uh, he participated on this album, the Christmas album that we'll still be talking about. He is actually uh, invited in one song and is future artist for Silent Night and with the Spanish and the English version. Oh, great. So when he told me that he uh, accepted, that he's, he was really excited about being part of his album, I was like, yes, I cannot believe it. And it was all made in quarantine, oh, wow. by the way. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, it is really nice to work with him. I've been on stage with him a couple of times. And uh, we, we do have that chemistry for music just, just right on point. But I think the fact that he is also a very uh, person rich in culture and understands what's happening around the world and, and, and sees the things in a very positive way and talks about dialogue. With him, I talk about a lot of dialogue. Right. Um, he is capable of having this connection, the true connection between between two people or a group of people. So yeah, I do admire that of him and I do learn from him and I call him my senpai, which in Japanese means my superior. Right. And oh. I learn from him every time I can, yeah. Gotcha. I remember in judo, it was sensei back in the day. Sensei was- uh, was Sensei, teacher. teacher. Yes, yes. Uh, you know, talk about um, connections, a live connection with a live audience. You took on a huge task recently. What was it like playing the title role of Evita Perón and Evita in the Wick Theater in Florida? Ah, marvelous. I loved it so much. It was uh, incredibly, an incredible experience. Uh, first of all, my first musical in the United States and 
in actually my entire life, my first musical. Okay. Uh, and I got to play the lead role. I was, I was completely, completely happy. Um, the fact that I had to learn that about 27 songs and I was on a stage 98% of the time of the show because right. that is Evita. It's, sure. it's actually a very distinctive musical where Evita has to be on stage all day long, like every time. Uh, I got to wear about uh, 18 costumes. I was really excited, really, really excited. And three wigs. They they were able to put this hair inside those wigs. Oh, wow. um, <laughs> no small task. Yeah, yeah. Two hours before each show. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, and truly, what I what I loved the most was just the fact that people, uh, regardless of my of my um, my hair, the fact that I was Colombian, uh, people were really connecting to what I was doing on stage. They were able to uh, truly understand every word. I was proud of that. I, used, I, I was really, really uh, focusing on being able to, to have a good pronunciation diction. Yeah. <laughs> the rest with all this music. Wow. music. When you're singing, it's hard. Uh, and also they felt what I was doing. And I did my best to, in a way, change a little bit of the image that people have of Evita on this musical, as usually they picture her as a villain right. or, yeah. or a bad woman who's just, you know, taking taking advantage of the fact that her husband, blah, 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 and all this money, and then he just wanted to have more money and just right. these perils and there's this. But I I wanted to I wanted to have a different approach. I wanted to, to have a different approach and, and, and have this emotional, just hardworking woman doing what she thought it was the best to achieve what she achieved. So she went through a lot. Of course, she went through a lot. She might have done bad things. I don't know. Uh, I do not, I never involved into politics in that way. But the way I was feeling it, it was a woman who just truly felt connected with her, with her people. And, and inside, she did want to help them. So Excellent. that is, um, that is sort of, I'm sorry, I just got to call and I had to like close okay. the door. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, uh, I, that, that's pretty much what I was what I was feeling and the fact that people understood they were crying during many many songs uh, that that touched my heart that touched my heart and I was incredibly proud and, and really happy for the fact that it was working and people were just getting the right message. That's outstanding. I have to also tell you that uh, I have been known to make people cry when I sing also. So, uh, <laughs> but uh, w what an accomplishment. So you're, uh, you're Latin, you didn't have a great grasp on the language until you came to this country and developed that. Mm -hmm. And now you're, on, now you're in a show, a huge show with a huge part. This is not a one minute part, like you said, 98% of the time you're on stage. So that, that's quite an accomplishment. Now, some people might recognize you and not be able to quite put the face together with the name. But yes. Daniela, many of us saw you for the first time in 2015, I believe, when you were a finalist on America's Got Talent. And uh, what yes. can you tell us about your time on that show? Oh, another, another, another uh, great experience. I could not believe I was on that show, actually. It was so quick. I came to the United States in 2014 uh, to to live in the United States. And at the end of the year, I applied and I submitted some, I requested an audition. And actually uh, what's funny is that they were all booked up. On, they just only had one, they only had one city, uh, which is St. Louis, Missouri. Okay, there uh, again. Let's call it the consequence, the, the, yes. how interesting. Uh, St. Louis, Missouri, I was like, I have no idea where St. Louis, Missouri is. Mm -hmm. I just came to the United States. I honestly do not know. So I had to study. <laughs> and I was in Miami and then going to St. Louis, very far away, uh, by myself. I was 22 years old. I remember taking that, that uh, airplane and I have no idea what am I doing here? Who do I have to talk to? Uh, my English still really, really bad by back then. Uh, let me just do what I know how to do, which is sing. And I just started singing and they allowed me to, to sing in Spanish. Actually, they encouraged me to sing in Spanish. I went through a lot of auditions and I always tell this story because it's, uh, it's really important for people to know that some of these shows are 
are a lot of stage shows. Most of the things that you see are already a script. Right. And, and there are things that, you know, it's very important to organize the show. Uh, so I was an exception that pretty much got into line from the beginning, every filter until I, I got to the audition in front of the judges. I had to do five filters before that. Wow. And I went on to semifinals. And they told me, Daniela, you, are, have, you have been the only person that had made it to the semifinals that we did not call. Because they usually wow. call artists to, to participate in America's Got Talent. Uh, and I was just a random person who showed up <laughs> and tried to do something there and follow my dreams. And, and that is it's true, honey, that dreams do come true. And if you fight, if you, if, you, um, if you really work for it hard, you definitely can make it. And I was completely, no, completely blessed. Daniela, you know, it's, it's amazing that you've had all these experiences and I'm, I'm kind of just pushing myself in now because Mark is really going to ask you certain things. But could you do us a favor? And yeah. if you can, say no. But I'd love just a few lyrics, a few little parts of your singing. If you would do that for us, that would be amazing. Oh, yeah. Uh, what song do you want me to sing? I do something from sing. Evita. Something from Evita, yes. Um, Don't cry for me, Argentina. The truth is that now the few through my wild days, my mad existence, I kept my promise. Don't keep your distance. Don't cry for me. Don't cry for me. Oh, there you wow. go. <laughs> we, we'll clap. Amazing, amazing. I not only was it amazing, but in all the shows I've done, uh, Susan has never asked me to sing. So this is really. <laughs> It's a reason, an Mark. With, with a voice like that, who needs to spend money on a band? I would, I would just fire the band. Because I have to tell you, it's interesting. When, I know you go to that. When I've, when I've seen you in some of your videos and I saw you on America's Got Talent, it goes from pop to power and then to opera, but in the same song. Very few people have done that. And I watch all those shows all the time. I'm, I'm addicted to those shows. So it's just, just such a talent. And, and it leads us into what's a big upcoming thing for you. Please tell us about your new Christmas album. Oh my God, I'm so excited about that one. I'm sorry, is that my phone? Yeah, that phone boy just fell. I am so excited about this album. Um, it is an album that I produced and arranged. Oh, good and actually, the first album I produced and arranged. I'm very, very proud of that. Sure. Uh, what made it happen? Curiosity and the will and the. Uh, I was just thirsty for more knowledge in production, let's say. And quarantine just had me at home and what else could I do? So I went online. I was looking for many courses or videos on YouTube or just trying to find uh, articles and reading and learning. I took about two to three months to study sort of basic for production and how to use Logic Pro, which is the, the, the software and all this stuff. Right. And, and then... I just was, I was able to record a few things and I was, you know what, hey, this is pretty, pretty interesting. I actually like it. It's, it's really uh, amazing that we're living this time where we are able to learn so many things and it's a, our panels of, of our hands. It's right here. You can manage through the phone. You can use the computer. It's just right there. It's just wanting to do it. And so I'm so um, excited about that fact that we are living this, this times. Before it was, it, it was probably impossible for us to just record a full album here at the house. Right. So I did this, this in two months, uh, 10, 10 song album, 10 track album, uh, all covers. We're going from uh, Little Drummer Boy okay. to Ave Maria. It was uh, White Christmas, uh, Have Yourself a Merry Little Christmas. Uh, this album, I am so, so proud of it, honestly. Uh, it's going to come out on... December 7th, which is next oh. Monday. And oh. um, why that day on a Monday? Because in Colombia that day, we celebrate something called Candle Day, which is a, a Catholic celebration where they uh, light in some candles at night and they sort of show the path for the three kings or, or the people who are just going to, to see Jesus be born. So that is a Catholic tradition they have in Colombia. There's a Candle Day. 
And I just love that day. Honestly, I grew up uh, loving just lighting up some candles. So December 7th, it's coming now. Uh, this Christmas with Daniela Mas, that is the title. Again, I am inviting uh, Nestor Torres. He is uh, one of the guests in this album. I also have um, a very talented a young lady, um, Celine Paulini in Canada. She's the pianist. Uh, and one of the songs, which is Ave Maria. Uh, she played her piano from the house. So everything was made at home. Uh, it is a very 2020 album. I am very, 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 very proud of it. And it's going to be available on December 7th. And I will be performing a couple of those songs on Sunday. This Sunday 6th, a day before for the concert in Mar Martha Mary's concert. Oh, outstanding. And, and where can people learn more about you, what you do, your performances, the charity work that you do? Where can they go to get that information? Yes, absolutely. You can follow me on social media if you want. You can find my name, Daniela Mas, on Instagram, uh, Facebook, Twitter, YouTube. I also have my website, danielamas.com. Daniela Mazza with double L, Daniela, and Mass as in church, double S. Right. So yeah, it is a pretty much how you can reach me and I'm always there connected on social media, I would say, uh, to just uh, update about my music and post a little bit of the process and how the album, the album was made. A lot of people are very curious and I show the gear and I show um, the, the songs that we'll be performing and it's a, it's a good way to just connect with people and show them that I'm also human and I'm, this is the way I work. Yeah. <laughs> this is the music I do. Outstanding that it's all done from home. And uh, Daniela, Susan and I cannot thank you enough for joining us today and sharing your vast experiences with our viewers, empowering people, the free little concert we just got. Uh, can't thank you enough. So I want to thank you for being here. Uh, and, and viewers, remember to reach out to us on social media. Look for Great Success on Facebook and Twitter. We'd love to hear from you. You can also find me, Mark Hobman, on LinkedIn. Again, thanks so much to Daniela Mass for being with us today. Susan, as always, thank you. And viewers, don't forget to tune into our next show. This is Mark Hobman thanking you for watching Lighting the Educational Flame on the Great Success Education channel. And have a great day. Daniela, many thanks. Take thank care, you so much. Daniela. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you for listening to Lighting the Educational Flame with Mark Hoberman. To contact Mark, email him at info at gradesuccess.com.